Hello everyone, my name is Mr. B. Today is June 21st of 2015. Today's actually Father's Day, so be sure to wish all of those fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Today we're going to talk about cereal dilutions. And, uh, well, my last video was about animal cells and plant cells and the differences between the two and their organelles. That was about two years ago. And I haven't made a video since then. I've always wanted to make more videos, but between work, family, other stuff, I just haven't found the time. And someone posted a comment on my last video asking me to do a video on cereal dilutions. And it, I really, to me, that's, I'm a teacher, by the way, if you haven't noticed yet. That's what teaching's all about. When people ask for information and they come to you and say, hey, you know, that was great. Can you talk about this now? To me, that's one of the most sincere forms of flattery, and I really enjoy that. And I really want to help people understand things. So I want to do my best to explain cereal dilutions now. Now, to me, cereal dilutions, that's just a really fancy way of saying, hey, let's take this known concentration, whatever it is, and kind of dilute it in a really accurate way. So let's start off with a quick example. So say we have a beaker, and in this beaker I have 100 milliliters of one molar HCl. Now that's pretty concentrated stuff that would burn through human skin pretty quick. It'd be really, really irritating and hard to deal with. So if you are using it for, I don't know what purpose you'd be using it for, but say you want to reduce that so it's less, less, uh, less dangerous to handle. What you can do is take, we're going to do a 10% dilution here, 10% serial dilution. SD. We're going to take 10 milliliters out of that and put it into a new beaker. Now this beaker is empty except for the fact that we just put 10 milliliters of our 1 molar HCl. Oops, 1 molar HCl. I'm going to write that again. I'll write it beside it. 1 molar HCl. What we're going to add to that is, is 90 milliliters of water, H2O. So water in this case will be white because I already made blue acid, so I apologize for that misconception. Anyways, now if you look at it, if you add these two up, we still have 100 milliliters in total, but now instead of having one molar HCl, which is what we had before, we have 0 0.1 molar HCl because it's been reduced by 10%. So we started off with 1, and we ended up with 0 0.1. We can now take what we just made and make it even less concentrated. If we take another 10 milliliters, put that into a new beaker. So again, 10 milliliters of our 0 0.1 HCl. And if we add 90 milliliters of water, H2O, we will end up with 100 milliliters. Volume remains the same, but our concentration is now 0 0.01 molar HCl. Uh, that doesn't look like HCl. Let me try that again. HCl. There we go. So that's our new concentration. And from our original 1 molar, we went down to 0 0.1, and now we're at 0 0.01. You could do that again if you wanted to. You could do that an infinite amount of times. You would end up with a less and less powerful or a less concentrated acid solution. Let's do another example really quick here. Let's start off with 200 mils of, let's call it 5 molar HCl. So that's really concentrated. And we will take, let's do 50% dilution this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half of that 200 mils, which will be 100 mils, into a new beaker. And because we want to have the same amount of, oh, let me just write this out really quick, 100 milliliters, 5 molar HCl. We want to have the same volume. We always want to have the same volume in a cereal dilution. So we're going to add 100 milliliters of H2O. So we end up with 200 mils total volume, but now our solution is, when we started with 5 originally, it's half, 2.5 molar HCl. 
So original was 5 molar, and we end up with 2.5 molar HCl. Now, if we want to, if that 2.5 is still too strong for us, which odds are it is, we can take another 100 mils, put it in a new beaker. This is 100 mils of our 2.5 solution. So 2 point, whoops, ah, erase, erase, erase. 100 milliliters of 2.5. That looks terrible. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to write that again. 2.5. And to that, we're going to add, no, go away. To that, we're going to add 100 milliliters of water. So we end up with, if we add these up, 200 mils, that looks like an H, let me erase that. It's a plus sign, not an H. Silly. Silly, Mr. B. 200 milliliters of now half of the 2.5, which is 1.25 molar HCl. If we wanted to, we could do this again, just take another 100 milliliters, add 100 milliliters of water, and at that point we'd end up with Oh, geez, I can't do the math in my head. That's kind of sad. Um, 0.675, I think, something like that. But 1.25 is pretty low in terms of dilution, so I'll probably stick with it there. Now, the individual who requested this video, I think her name was Dawn. By the way, Dawn, thank you for requesting this video. She also wanted to know about V1D1 equaling V2D2. And at first when I read this, I had no idea what that was. Obviously, it's a formula that deals with volume, and I think the D is dilutions. Now, the formula I know is V1C1 is equal to V2C2. I'm assuming they're the same, but sometimes making assumptions isn't a good thing. So, the formula I know, V is obviously volume, and C is concentration. Concentration. So, you use this formula to find out how much volume you need to add or how much of uh, or how much your concentration will change if you add a certain volume. Now, I'm assuming again it's the same thing. The volumes should be the same and D probably stands for dilution or dilutant, whatever it may be. So, let's take a look at how this formula works. Now, with pretty much any other oh, that, that looks terrible. Any other formula that you work with in math, science, anything, what you're going to do is you're going to want to manipulate the variables depending on what you have, V2, C2. So for example, let's say we know what our V1 and C1 are and we need to find out our V2, if we know our C2 as well. So let's say V1 is 100 mils, which would really be uh, 0 0.1 liters when we're dealing with formulas. C1 is 5 and we want our C2 to be, uh, let's say, 1. It makes it easier on us. So we want to find out what our V2 equals. So we don't know the V2. But we do know everything else here. So what we would do is rewrite out the formula, because you always want to start off with your formula. It was V2, C2. And in this case, we need to isolate our V2. We do that by kind of rearranging the formula based on what we have. So V2C2 is equal to V1C1. Now, to get rid of this C2 here, all we have to do is divide it by itself, so C2. That will cause them both to cancel out, but we can't divide this side of the formula by C2 if we don't divide this side of the formula by C2. So we end up with V2 equaling... V1C1 divided by C2. At this point, you kind of just plug in your numbers and work it out. So our V1 was 0 0.1, our V or our C1 was 5 multiplied, and our C2 was 1. So our V2 should end up being 0 0.5, 0 0.5 liters, which at this point to me doesn't make sense. I must have made a calculation error somewhere. But anyways, you rearrange the formula, and you plug in your numbers, and it should work out. Now, at any point, if I've made a mistake here, someone please in the comments let me know. Maybe it's not June 21st today. Maybe it's not Father's Day. I don't know. I make mistakes all the time. That's how you learn, by making mistakes. 
And I really do enjoy making these videos. I enjoy helping people learn as much as I can. So if you have any questions about anything, please leave a comment. If you'd like to see a video on something else, again, please leave a comment. This video is now more than 10 minutes long, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope everyone has a great day and happy learning.